Hey friends, in the video today, I am going to attempt to ketofy one of the most delicious comfort food dishes out there. We are gonna do keto chicken and waffles. And the recipe that I'm gonna do is keto because it has lots of spices and stuff like baking powder. Uh, but this recipe would actually also be really easy to make carnivore as well, because the base of everything is carnivore. So as we go along, I will let you know those tweaks that you need to make if you want to make this completely carnivore. One thing that I love to do on my channel is work on techniques and basic recipes that can be applied to all kinds of different recipes. So instead of just coming up with a recipe for a meal, I like to come up with more techniques where you can use it. It's like a basic that you can just apply to all different types of things. The one that I am most well known for is bread. I worked really hard to create a really delicious keto bread recipe. And of course, once you have a bread recipe, you can use that for any number of dishes and applications. Another one of those great recipes that is absolutely a favorite in our house is my protein breading recipe. And again, that is one where once you have that breading base, you can use that in all kinds of different things. And I'm gonna be using that today. So this video is more of like bringing together some of those different basic techniques and creating an amazing dish with them. Of course, with chicken and waffles, you have two different components, the chicken and the waffles. For the chicken, what I'm gonna be doing is ketofying a recipe I found online. I found what looks like a delicious buttermilk fried chicken recipe, and I am gonna be using that. I chose boneless, skinless chicken thighs uh, because I think it'll be easier to eat the chicken with the waffles if it's boneless, and fried chicken thighs are absolutely incredible. I did pound them a little bit to get them a little thinner so that as I fry them, it just cooks a little faster. If you're using chicken with bones in it, it's gonna take a lot longer to cook through, so you're gonna have to adjust the temperature of the oil as you cook it so you don't burn the outside before the inside gets cooked. So the recipe that I'm basing my fried chicken on is from sugarandsoul.com and I will put a link to that recipe down below. The first step for that recipe is to marinate the chicken in the buttermilk and spices. So I got this going a couple of hours ago because you do want to get that done ahead of time. The sponsor of the video today is Armra Colostrum. So colostrum is the first food that we and other mammals get, and it is absolutely packed with all kinds of nutrients, and there are all kinds of benefits shown from consuming it. It's been shown to reduce inflammation, it can enhance your hair health and your gut health. It has also been shown that colostrum can help enhance your fitness performance and fitness recovery. I've recently added a lot more exercise into my life than previously, and so that's absolutely Absolutely one benefit that I am looking for. So Armro starts with a sustainably sourced colostrum from grass-fed cows, and they only take the surplus, the stuff after the calves have gotten everything they need, so you don't have to worry about the little calves. And then they actually use a cold chain technology to purify the colostrum without having to do heat pasteurization. So lots of colostrum products on the market use a heat pasteurization, which can kill some of the nutrients. So they're cold chain technology helps to ensure that a lot of the nutrients stay intact. So you're really getting a good bang for your buck when you choose the Armour product. Armour Colostrum wants to give my viewers a special discount. You can get 15% off of your order just by using my link or the coupon code indigo at checkout. The link is tryarmra.com slash indigo. That's T-R-Y-A-R-M-R-A dot com slash indigo. Just use that link and you will get automatically your 15% off of your first order. Thanks again to Armour Colostrum for sponsoring today. It is sponsors like Armra that make it possible for me to bring you guys all kinds of free content. So I really do appreciate it when you support the companies that support my channel. Basically, I tossed the chicken in the spices, which were half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I use granulated garlic, half a teaspoon of dried mustard powder, a quarter teaspoon of paprika, and a quarter teaspoon of dried sage. 
Once I got the chicken all tossed in that, then I poured the one cup of buttermilk on top and just tossed that to coat. Let's go ahead and get going with the breading for the fried chicken. So instead of the flour in the recipe, of course I have to replace that. I'm gonna be replacing it with my protein breading mix. And the base of that mix is egg white powder, beef gelatin, although any unflavored gelatin would work, and some pork rind crumbs. And if you do have my protein breading all mixed up, like bulk and ready to go, you can just use five ounces of this, and that's definitely what I recommend. I love having this in my pantry. I keep it unseasoned so that whatever I'm making, I can add whatever seasonings I want at the time. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and measure out each of these ingredients one by one for you, just in case you don't have the protein breading mixed up already. First ingredient is 50 grams of egg white powder, and you can use whole egg powder here as well. That'll totally work if that's what you have. Then 15 grams of the gelatin, and that is about one and a half tablespoons. And then we're gonna add 80 grams of our pork rind crumbs. Now for the seasonings. So this is an ingredient that I have not tried in the breading, but it is a common ingredient in fried chicken. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. It is baking powder, and there are some chemical reaction reasons that you use it in fried chicken breading. It's gonna help the breading to brown and get crispy. Um, like I said, I have not tried it with this kind of breading before, so we will see if it gives it that effect here as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it. One half of a teaspoon of baking powder. Then I am leaving the salt out of the breading recipe because the pork rind crumbs are already seasoned with salt and I don't want it to be too salty. I did put the salt in the buttermilk mixture, so I did add some salt, uh, but I think that's gonna be plenty with the salt that's already in the pork rind crumbs. Then we're gonna do three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic granules, three quarters of a teaspoon of paprika, and I do have smoked paprika. That's pretty much the only paprika I buy because it's so good. Three quarters of a teaspoon of dried basil, three quarters of a teaspoon of dried thyme, also three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder. And then the recipe calls for cayenne pepper, uh, but I don't like my fried chicken too spicy. Um, so I'm gonna just do Creole seasoning, which does have a little bit of spice. It adds a lot of flavor. It also adds a little bit of salt as well, but it's not gonna add as much spice as the cayenne pepper. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of the Creole seasoning. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this all mixed up with my whisk and we will be ready to start frying. So of course, if you are making this recipe 100% carnivore, you would want to leave out all of the spices and the baking powder and just go with the um, gelatin, pork rind crumbs, and egg white powder. And then if you wanna add salt, you can, uh, but like I said, this already has salt in it. Now let's move over to the stove and we're gonna get our fat heated up for frying. I'm gonna get my pan turned on to about medium high heat and I'll probably be turning it down to around medium uh, before I start cooking the chicken once the pan gets heated up. Um, with the egg white powder in the breading, I think it browns a little faster than just regular flour would. So you do have to be really careful about the temperature and go with a little bit lower than you would typically do with a regular fried chicken. I have my tub of bacon grease here. I'm gonna try to get about an inch of fat in my pan and you could use tallow or lard or whatever other cooking fat you happen to have. Um, I just have an abundance of bacon grease and it's not gonna make it taste bad. It's gonna add it's gonna add some delicious flavor. Don't know if I got quite to an inch, but I think that'll be enough. If you're doing like big thick pieces of bone in um, fried chicken, you're gonna wanna get like one to two inches probably. So you'll need a lot more fat, but I pounded my chicken thighs a little bit and um, that since they don't have bones, they're a lot thinner and I think this will be plenty of fat. I did wanna mention that I used a little over a pound of chicken thighs and that was four chicken thighs. And I expect with this amount of breading and this amount of the um, marinade, I probably could have done a couple more 
uh, chicken thighs. So maybe like a pound and a half to two pounds of chicken for this amount of breading and marinade. While the fat is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on breading these. Just gonna shake off the excess of the buttermilk and get these nice and coated. So you definitely don't wanna throw this chicken into cold oil. And one way that you can test to see if the oil is ready and hot enough is just throw a little bit of breading in there and I can see it's not like bubbling up super fast. So it's not hot enough. I'm gonna wait another minute or two. The temp of the oil came up to about 300 degrees and that's what I'm kind of keeping it at here. Um, I put in my first two chicken thighs. I had my camera paused and I forgot to unpause it when I put them in. Um, but I do expect that they'll take about six to eight minutes per side, probably around six since they are a little thinner and they are boneless. But of course, you're always gonna wanna check with a meat thermometer to make sure you get them cooked through. I also am going to be adjusting the temperature of the stove as needed to make sure that they get nice and brown um, without getting overcooked because uh, I want to make sure there's plenty of time for it to get cooked through, but then not for it to burn the breading. So far, so good. I think about 300 degrees on the oil temp is what you're going to want. And there's really not a ton of breading left over, so I think this amount of chicken is actually pretty good for the amount of breading. You might be able to get one more chicken thigh uh, breaded with that, but I'd say one to one and a half pounds actually for the amount of chicken that this recipe works for. All right, it's been six minutes on that side and these are looking nicely golden. So I'm gonna get that flipped and um, we'll see how long it takes on this side, maybe like four minutes up to six minutes. Okay, so four minutes on that side, and I did check the temperature, and we are all good. So, oh my gosh, that looks so amazing. I'm gonna pull those off and get my second two going. Um, of course, the timing always has to do with the thickness of the chicken and the heat of your pan. So, always go by temperature rather than time. Just one little nugget there. While the chicken is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get prepped on my waffles. I am plugging in my Dash waffle maker. So these waffles, the way I'm gonna be making them, the only thing that is non-carnivore is the baking powder, but you can leave that out if you'd like. I'm gonna be using some collagen. I've done different flavors of these waffles before and you, there's a, some variations. I'll put the link to my waffle video up in the cards. But for these ones, I'm just gonna do some collagen. And this is another thing that you can leave out if you want to. I just think it gives a little bit more structure to the waffles. Um, I have eight egg yolks in here. I'm just gonna whisk those up. And then I am gonna add my two tablespoons of collagen. This scoop is a two tablespoon scoop. So I'm gonna throw that in. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of the baking powder and two tablespoons of melted butter. And that is all for the batter for the waffles. It is very, very simple, but these are some of the best keto waffles that I have had that taste, you know, very bready. Um, Chaffles are delicious and they're very cheesy and crispy, but it does taste like a crispy cheese. These ones, they actually have a little bit of breadiness to them, which is delicious. And then once my waffle iron is preheated, we will get going with these. I do like to use my little scooper because it just measures out the batter so easily. So I'm gonna be using that and I'm gonna spray with a little bit of YU tallow spray. I probably won't spray um, between each waffle, but just to get started, I'm gonna give it a quick spray. And this amount of batter will make about uh, six waffles. Let's see what that does. All right, another four minutes on this side and we're gonna call that good. Oh man, that looks amazing. Gotta get out my little nugget. 
and chicken is done and this waffle is probably done yum All right, I got five waffles out of this batch. It just depends on how big you make them. And I'm ready to get this plated up. There's the chicken and waffles. And so typically chicken and waffles is served with uh, a honey or a honey sauce. There's different variations. Um, I don't have a honey, a keto honey that I love or keto honey substitute that I really love. Um, but I do have a maple syrup substitute and that is what I'm gonna be using. This is the RX Sugar Maple Syrup and it is allulose based, but you could use any kind of honey or maple syrup substitute you like on here or if you wanted to skip the um, sweetness altogether, or if you wanted to do it 100% carnivore, you could just drizzle with melted butter, call it good. Um, or if you're a carnivore that incorporates honey in your diet, you could just do a regular old honey on there. Uh, but I am gonna do some maple syrup drizzle here. Okay, gotta do a taste test. I got pretty pictures taken, but now we got to dig into this and get a taste. Yum. Mm. Oh my gosh. That is so good. And one thing I love about this breading is that you don't get breading sleeves. <laughs> a lot of breadings, keto and otherwise, you cook your chicken and it just slides, the, the breading just slides right off like, like it's just a breading sleeve. But I think the egg white powder and maybe the gelatin in this recipe just helps it to adhere to the chicken. And so it just stays on beautifully. Oh, I gotta go in for another bite. This is so good. The salty and the savory with a little bit of sweet and like the breadiness of the waffles. Wow. This is so incredibly delicious. And there's very few carbs, especially very few net carbs. If you do count allulose, you know, the amount of syrup you add is going to make the total carbs pretty high. I personally don't count allulose, but besides the syrup, I mean, it's just protein and fat that makes up all of this. And I'll tell you what, like if this was a regular chicken and waffles, I'd probably be able to eat this amount. But when there is this much protein like compacted in there, there's no way I'd be able to get through all of this. Probably one piece of chicken and one, maybe one and a half waffles. Um, but yeah, the satiating power of protein plus fat is pretty powerful with this recipe. I think with the holidays coming up, this is gonna be a great recipe if you have any like special breakfasts or brunches, especially if you have family members that are resistant to keto or carnivore because they think that the food is not gonna taste good. You make this up for somebody and I can't imagine that someone is going to think that this kind of meal is boring. So please do let me know if you try this. I will put recipes down in the description that are printable so you can find those there. Thank you for hanging out in the kitchen with me today. I am gonna go sit down and eat and I will see you again in the next video.